piping and then we'll get in and have a look at some high capacity floppy stuff oh and i should get the background music happening it's been a little while since i've uh, run a stream because um i've started a new job which is going really really well um and although my commute is a touch long uh, it's by bike and I'm really enjoying it actually to be honest um, having a nice bike ride a lot of it's along the um, the river that goes through the city here um, and some of the rest of it's through some quite nice bush and parklands um, so yeah it's good now is that actually playing hitting play what's it doing plugged in haha ha. that should do it I'll just put my volume up a bit more someone can tell me if the uh, the balance is a bit wrong so let me just need to put the ad out on challenge channel as well okay and pull up twitch so I need to be able to see what we're doing as well at least some of the time anyway I'm a bit, where's my HDMI Okay. You don't really want to look at my face. You can have a look at the Mega 65 display in the meantime. So this is what you can see here is the floppy test program that what um, trends are actually going to use. Um, so if I turn the Mega 65 off and on, see so the idea is that this is how they'll test each and every one of the floppy drives. Uh, prior to release so you can see it actually automatically starts straight in uh, and starts working okay right I can pop that where is it here we go Uh, nope, I want that up here actually, don't I? Boop, 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 boop. As I said, it's been a little while since I've run a stream. Hello, folks, welcome along. So, this is just the um, Mega 65 disk drive test program that I've cooked up from the floppy test program stuff for, um, uh, for trends uh, when they are actually assembling the um, uh, Mega 65 units that will go out for production which is all getting very exciting um, and let me get this is the one I want over there I want my Emacs window so that I can see what I am doing uh, Okay. So what I'm wanting to work on this morning is um I've been talking on the um Discord channel for the Hey six five oh two kebab. Um the um floppy storage. So we've had the regular eight hundred K floppy disks working for a little while now for reading, writing and formatting. Um, which is really good um, and then uh, I've more recently got high density disks working so just regular 1.44 meg uh, capacity uh, so that's what you can see testing here so you can see on each uh, so each column is um, one track and you have the the dark green 
uh, and the light green kind of uh, reflect which side of the disc it's on. So we can see there's, what was it? I think there's uh, 20 sectors per side uh, because we're doing HD in double 1581 style. So we can, rather than the PC 1.44, it will already be 1.6 megabytes. And that's all that PCs, sorry, that, that 1.44 or 1.6 uh, or 1.76 on the Amiga because they did track it once. Uh, so with track it once, you can get rid of all the gaps between the sectors and that saves you about 10% of the disc. Um, so you can get an extra sector or two on every track. And so that's how the Amiga fit more uh, on a track. So 880 instead of uh, 720 that PCs had on the, uh, the double density discs. Uh, the Commodore 65 and the 1581 go halfway in between. Uh, I think they use slightly shorter gaps than the PC did. Uh, and so they can fit 10 sectors instead of nine. The Amiga fits 11 instead of 10. Um, now, the reason that we have that limit is that all of those prior systems couldn't change the data rate for the floppy drive controller um, smoothly. So uh, if you think about the 1541, that put more sectors on the outside tracks than on the inside tracks because those tracks are physically longer. And actually what's interesting is that the, the media is moving past the head faster. Uh, and because it's magnetic media, the induced electric field in the read head is proportional to the square of the speed uh, of the media going past. So part of it is actually the, the fact that the, the tracks are longer, but a lot of it actually is simply that the disc is going past that bit faster and that makes uh, a shorter pulse, uh, a shorter, you know, a bit of magnetic flux inversion on the disc easier for the head to read. Now, there is some uh, challenges to doing something like that on a, a PC three and a half inch floppy drive, which is what we're using. We have custom controller, right? So we can control the speed smoothly and the Mega 65's floppy controller supports uh, smooth speed control so we can change the speed on every track um, but the PC floppy drives are probably a little bit optimized for the data uh, bit rates that they expect that in the analog end of the electronics there's probably some magic in there that um, helps to amplify the signals that come in at the expected kind of times um, so it could be that what we're going to try and do fails dismally um, on the other hand, my gut feeling is that it will probably work uh, well enough, certainly if when we're talking about speeds that are quite close, or data rates rather quite close to what the, um, the 1.44 meg floppy drive normally would do, uh, we're probably going to be, well, actually it's, it, it's interesting because the 3.5 inch floppy disks are so small, the track length of the outside track is 1.6 times the length of the inside track, whereas on a five and a quarter inch floppy disk, because it's physically larger, um, and so you've got a larger circle and only a bit larger circle, whereas on a three and a half inch disk, you've got, uh, you know, the inner circle has a, a diameter of uh, about an inch, um, so we'll spec'd in inches, which is a bit annoying, um, and then the outside diameter is about two inches, so it's there's quite a big difference uh, in the uh, the track length. And of course, then the speed of the media going past. So my back of envelope calculations, we should be able to get 1.6 times the data on the outside tracks without any trouble, and maybe even more uh, because of that V squared uh, influence. Uh, so the 1.6 times is purely based on the linear effect of the track being longer. Um, so yeah, all of the, the back of envelope calculation, um, we should be able to get uh, about two megabytes on a 1.44 meg uh, floppy uh, by doing this kind of thing. Uh, and maybe even a, a whisker more if we uh, let ourselves use up to track 84, which the Alps drives in the production Mega 65s seem to be quite happy to work with. But we'll, we'll probably stick to, uh, to 80 tracks for the time being. Now, we we'll probably won't have time to attack today, uh, but I want to. Uh, is actually switching from MFM encoding uh, to an RLL 2,7 code. So those who are old enough will remember the days of MFM and RLL hard drives. And RLL hard drives fit about 50% more than an MFM hard drive. And the reason was actually the coding. Uh, so 
in the same way that MFM fits twice as much as FM by never putting two pulses too close to each other. Uh, they have to be spaced by one bit gap. That allows you to double the clock. So that's why MFM fit twice as much as FM. With R11 2,7, the closest gap has two bit spaces between it. So you can triple the FM clock or one and a half times the MFM clock. Uh, the trade-off is that the accuracy of the timing to work out where the next bit is has to be a little bit sharper. Uh, and so we'll see the floppy drives are supposed to be spec to 1% motor speed, which means the difference between a reader and a writer can be 2% because uh, one could be writing slow and the other reading fast. Um, and that's probably going to be fine. But again, we're definitely going to hit uh, then some of these issues around with the floppy drive when it's ex in the analog electronics when it's expecting bits. So um, yeah, we'll see. But if we can make it work, we can get over three megabytes uh, on a floppy disk, which on a 1.44 meg floppy disk. So this is really cool. We can basically fit what an ED, um, you know, extended density 2.88 meg uh, floppy could fit uh, onto a 1.44 meg floppy, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning in all of this is that what we're doing is actually, I looked at how the, the CMD FD2000 and FD4000 worked, um, and they actually did a different way. Um, they, on the from even on the FD2000, they actually doubled the sector size to 1024 bytes instead of 512 bytes. So we're not doing that. We're sticking with standard 512 byte sectors. Um, it's just a little bit easier to do. It means that the disks that we're doing won't be compatible with those drives. We may well add support to work with FD2000 and 4000 drives later, um, but that's a little bit of a, a lower priority. Um, but it, it's interesting as to why they did it that way. Um, and I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the 1K sectors reduces you the number of gaps you have, so you might be able to fit an extra sector on the track, um, and that might be uh, why they did it. But on the flip side, it now means instead of with a 1581 reading in a sector um, and you know using half of that uh, at a time, uh, you're now reading a sector and using four lots of uh, you know logical 256 byte sectors. So there's possibly a little bit more housekeeping that you have to do in the, the DOS uh, to support that. Whereas keeping with the 512 byte sectors, we may even be able to fairly easily patch the C65's DOS uh, to support um, HD disks with 1.6 meg uh, and maybe even these uh, funny kind of 3 megabyte disks that we're talking about doing uh, with the RLL coding because uh, it would just be variable numbers of sectors per track but they'll otherwise all be the same so just the BAM really needs to be uh, handled differently so yeah um, yeah, 652 Kebabs asking, um, did I ever think that I would understand floppy drives so intimately? Um, no, not at the beginning, although once we kind of got a, a few years in, I, I did start thinking about the floppy drive piece. And so this is actually one of the bits that I've wanted to work on for a really long time because I, I've had in mind that it ought to be possible to fit much more on a three and a half inch floppy uh, than 1.44 meg. Um, what's interesting is probably that the record for fitting the most on a three and a half inch floppy um, is some of the super drives that supported using, uh, you know, they, they had the, the funky disks that fit 120 meg, but they claimed that you could put 32 meg on a standard disk. Now that relied on their drive having very accurate um, motor speed and, and being able to move the head much more accurately. So you could pack, you know, they might have had instead of 80 tracks, they might have had 320 or 640 tracks or something. Um, and of, of course, you could have the much more accurate timing, so they probably did use something like an RLL27 code, or even uh, there are some higher RLL codes that, you know, like there's RLL47 um, or 49 codes that let you double the bit rate again at various trade-offs. Um, so yeah, it's been actually quite interesting looking at the um, this whole kind of signal processing side of the floppy drives. Um, yeah, it's quite fun. So let's then have a look at uh, I need to bring that one up. Okay, so let's have a look at my floppy drive code. Um, so this is um, floppy drive test is what uh, we saw running on the other thing. We actually put it for there was one bad sector, which is the first time we've had that happen on the um, uh, the disk for a while. It can happen just by chance, of course, because floppies are floppies. Um, it's why you should actually verify a disk after you format it, um, which the C65 DOS doesn't do, um, which is a bit interesting. Um, but what we need to do 
is make something that on a given track uh, we'll have a look at how many sectors we can pack on by slowly increasing the data rate. Now the annoying thing, this is compiled using CC65 which has intermittent strange things, I don't know whether they're yet compiler bugs, I suspect they might well be, um, when you start having a program too large. So I'm going to need to prune out uh, various bits of this, so let's call it um, floppy capacity.c get the make file up floppy capacity.c get our make file in all in order okay right so that should generate uh, that uh, oh hang on we said a couple more comments there so um, uh, Keith Kanan 64 is saying yeah wow he had an LS 120 super drive when they were, um, when you uh, uh, bought a computer um, yes <laughs> now it has uh, none of the original parts in it it's like grandpa's axe right where you replace the handle and the head several times but it's still grandpa's old axe um, and yeah, it never realized that you could put high capacity on a standard floppy drive. I think it depends on the particular version of super drive uh, that you have. Um, because some of them had a, an incompatible disk, whereas other ones actually had um, these funny things that looked like three and a half inch floppies that could fit in. Um, yeah, and so um, 64 Duke of is saying, always assume that the floppy mechanism dictated the storage. Seems not to be the case. Well, yarn, yes and no. Um, in that the mechanism definitely is placing limits on us, right? Because I would love to put 160 tracks instead of 80 tracks, for example. Uh, but the mechanism doesn't let us do that. All it lets us do is write data uh, faster or slower and put the pulses at arbitrary times. So one of the things that we might have to do with the RLL coding, and that might even let us get more on the disk, um, or maybe it might just be necessary to get what we want on there, is to use write precompensation. Um, so because we're doing with magnetics, uh, when you put a flux inversion on the disk, um, it can move, which is really annoying. If you kind of think about <laughs> data storage and you, you put a bit down somewhere and it stays put. Um, but because of the forces on uh, the magnetic uh, flux inversions, you put it somewhere uh, and the existing magnetic field can basically uh, repel it and cause it to not really start to be written until a bit later on the disk. Uh, and so uh, we, we're going to have to look at when we do the writing where those pulses actually end up and do co some compensation for that. And also talked about that 2% difference in bit position due to, uh, to disk reader and writer speed. Um, we might have to, to soup up our uh, phase lock loop that latches onto the data bits when they're being read off the floppy to estimate what the true data rate is versus the apparent data rate uh, coming off the disk because of those spindle speeds. So that we should be able to correct for up to a couple of percent of um, position error. Uh, and that can let us get more on the disk as well. So uh, anyway, um, I think I have that all organized. Um, what I need as well. Oops, we need to have a compilation window. Make source tests floppy capacity dot prog. Uh, we don't have a rule. For, if I not saved that yet, no changes to be saved. Floppy capacity dot prog. Well, it even let me do it right. Oh, this is we can't yet. Yeah, right, the C file is not saved. Have I? Hmm. Source test. Oh, right. I've muffed up the make file. Right. I've said I want floppy drive capacity dot C. That's not gonna fly. Whoops. Right, so we can compile it, and then we can do an M65 reset 
C64 mode run source tests floppy capacity .prg. Now this is going to um, well that you don't want to see me I'm trying to see the I have to remember where my cameras are so it's actually just gone back into the format thing well actually which it will do anyway um, if I um, but the problem we have here is actually that on the mega 65 I've set it to auto boot from a disk image that has the um, Uh, the floppy test program because that's how trends will use it right uh, there it is we've got flop test.c let's change that to hasn't actually got solitaire on it anymore it's just been a disk image I've been testing with so we'll save that and now we should be able to reset back and that's fine. So now I can right. So now when we run it, it runs. It. And of course, it's actually currently still running the same floppy test thing. Hey, Hoodware, welcome along. Um, so and six hundred two kebabs asking. So would friction inside the physical disk be a problem? Um, it can be a problem, but we're not changing the speed that the disk turns. We're changing the data rate in bits per second that we actually instruct the drive to write magnetic flux inversion. So the way a floppy drive writes data, it doesn't write you know north for one and south for zero. Um, what it does is it writes unchanging field orientation uh, for a zero nominally, uh, and then to write a one, you invert the um, uh, the magnetic field. So when the read head passes over that uh, inverting field, that's when it generates an electrical pulse in the head uh, because you've got a, a changing magnetic field causes a changing electric field. Um, and that's what the drive reads. Um, hey, Hedwig, yeah, so we're working on high capacity floppy storage for the Mega 65. So we should be able to fit at least two megabytes on a 1.44 meg floppy. Um, and that's kind of going to explore the, the limits of that particular thing uh, this morning. Um, but we're also going to have a look if I get time uh, or otherwise next time. Hey, Judge Drock, um, at fitting about three meg on as uh, 1.44 meg floppy uh, by using RLL 27 coding, Sim the same RLL coding that early hard drives used to fit 50% more on. Uh, we can do it on floppies as well, in theory. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, good evening or morning. It is indeed uh, morning. So for those wondering, it's about uh, 10 to 7 in the morning uh, here in Australia. And uh, it's a really bit light outside, I can see. Uh, a bit of uh, you know sky and cloud through the gum trees out the window uh, which is quite nice and yeah it's actually because i'm normally up uh, about half past five uh, most mornings so when i'm heading off to work uh, i've got about a one and a half hour bike ride to get into work and i like to try and start by about eight be finished by about four so i can ride home by about half past five or um, uh, or thereabouts and yeah so i, I tend to, to get up early so yeah, so nice and late for you folks in Europe um, and early for me. So anyway, so what's running here is the um, the floppy disk test program, which is what I'm in the process of hacking away at to turn it into a how much data can we fit on a track uh, by fiddling the data rate that we write to the floppy drive. So let me go back to the source code editor. Oh, wherever my mouse has gone. Come on, where is it? There it is. Okay, so let's go down to main, and we're just going to strip out Mega 65 floppy drive capacity testing. So we don't want to format a disk endlessly. We don't want to read all sectors. What we want to be able to do. Um, is we want to be able to pick a data rate and pick a track number, um, erase the track, so we'll actually remove all the flux inversions from the track, uh, and then we will format the track using that particular layout, uh, and then we'll see whether we can read it back. Um, 
Oh, so you you grew up in Australia, you know, six point two kebab, but yeah, folks didn't get citizenship for you. Now you're too old to return under the current visa conditions. What a bummer. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, international immigration stuff, right? That you we, we talk about departments of immigration. <coughs> really, what they are is the 1984 sense of ministries of immigration. They exist actually to stop people moving across borders. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them, right? We just let people move across borders. Um, and yeah, it kind of sucks that uh, uh, things get caught up uh, in there. So yeah, um, you, there's often funny exceptions and stuff. And uh, you know, if you have the right ethnicity and stuff, it can be easier. And if you English is a, uh, a mother tongue or very good, uh, you may find that there are uh, loopholes and things that let you uh, go through. <laughs> so, yeah, the primary school you went to is long gone, so resumption is not an option. Um, no, possibly not. But you know, throw me a, a, a direct message or something at some, on Discord or something. We can have a, a chat and see whether I know of any of the, uh, the funny rules that might still apply uh, in your situation. Because, of course, I don't advertise the, the rules for all the same reasons, right? It's about not letting people through. Um, but they also now have some good categories for folks that are highly skilled, uh, and IT-type skills are uh, in that kind of list. But anyway, enough immigration law discussion. Um, so we want to, let's just make, so I've got a, a routine already. Uh, what is it? It's format single track side. Um, no, no, so no need to apologize there. Um, 602 kebab. Um, so we can do something like format single track side. Now this assumes that we already have the track and the side set and then we tell it how many sectors and whether we want gaps so if we have gaps then that's a 1581 style format without gaps it's an amiga style format where we pack more sectors onto the disk um, so we need to have track num set so we could do zero side is zero and i think we actually also have to physically seek to the track first um, sector count with gaps so we can have variables for those um put this in a block because with cc65 um it's old c dialect so if you want to declare variables have to be done at the start of a block um, unsigned char sector count uh, and so we can start with 10 unsigned char with gaps equals one so this would, should be a standard um one here oh, sorry oh, we have a pronunciation uh, hint here so i oh, see so you pronouncing it as kebab rather than kebab um is that the correct pronunciation i think so if i'm reading your response there, but yeah tell me if i'm right then so 6502 kebab um is how it should be said um okay so we've got our sector count we've got our gaps we're also going to want to keep track of the um bit interval so the way that this works on the mega 65 um is we don't specify the data rate in kilobits per second i might have to change this down the track but at the moment we don't instead we specify how many 40.5 megahertz cycles um between each interval so if we we'll just do it in decimal if we don't even have that in hex so standard um hd 3.5 inch floppy is 500k bit per second um equals one uh, megabit or rather it's one megahertz um mfm rate because it remember it takes um two clocks per mfm bit right so that would do standards so what we need to do before we format the track is we need to and i think i have a routine for this seek to well certainly got plenty of routines that will seek to a correct track um so let me 
find one. Um, we'll just copy a bunch of code out from here so that we set everything up correctly. So we want the floppy motor on, obviously. We want, so the auto tracking, this is a, um, it's a feature that makes it easier to be bug compatible with the C65's floppy controller and DOS behavior. Um, it'll seek to uh, the correct track uh, based on whatever track you ask for. It'll look at what's coming off the disc and if it's a number is too low, then it will step out and if it's too high, it will step in. Um, so it's kind of like, a, it's like an auto tune for singers, putting them onto the right pitch. Um, so we, um, but in some parts of the documentation, we even call it auto tune. Um, and I changed the way it works. There's actually two different addresses that are used for it. We can actually get rid of the old one because the old one doesn't do anything anymore. It's now only the new one. Um, and yes, we want the regular, the fl uh, floppy sector buffer, not the SD card sector buffer uh, visible in memory, uh, which is all good and fine. And hello to all the other lurkers on here. Ah, okay. Does the controller detect HD versus DD media at this point? Um, Yes, it does. So let me show you the sneaky way that I actually implement this in uh, the thing. So we need MFM decode. Okay, so we have in the VHDL, get that a little bit further. So here is uh, an MFM decoder. So it auto detects for reading, but not for writing at the moment. Uh, and I, I can probably fix it uh, with a bit of skullduggery down the track, uh, but it definitely does it for reading at the moment. So um, the, I'm just gonna move the microphone a little bit out of the way so it's easy for me to see the screen. Tell me if it gets too quiet or if the um, the balance with the music gets a bit out. Um, so we tell it the number of cycles per uh, MFM interval, and then we have all of these kind of control signals that come through. So this is the one that normally will be for DD uh, and then what we have, if we scroll down, you can see I've got another one here. Uh, so MFM 2X, so this is the double speed one, which is for HD disks. And it, the interval is the same interval, but divided by two. So we take the upper bits rather than all of the bits. Uh, and this lets us simultaneously try to read a disk as HD and DD. Uh, and what we find if I come down to uh, found sector 2x, find where else that occurs. Um, we have this FDC 2x select. So we basically decide through the code whether we are um, reading from a, oh, sorry, this is, if you want to be able to read what it, it thinks, sorry, I'm confusing things there. If we go to found track, 2x again there's another no where is it it's fdc uh, sector found 2x okay so the when we want to read a sector we first make sure that neither of the um, uh, the dd and hd decoders are seeing um, the sector and this actually is to fix a bug where um, we would read and we read from part way through a sector instead of reading the whole sector and that was really not very good. Um, so we now wait to make sure that that's not the case. And then um, we, what's that in? So that's, okay, so reading a sector, we abort when we get there. Um, but what we really care about is we now have a code block that checks for if the sector has been found at HD, and we have a similar one up here for if the sector has been found uh, at DD. So we effectively have two read parts on the floppy controller. Um, so you don't have to fiddle the controller into HD or DD mode, it will just read either way. Um, so this also means that you can make disks that are weirdly set up with a mix of HD and DD sectors. If you wanted to do some fun copy protection, um, you could do some abomination uh, in this particular way. So yeah, so that's how we, we do that herdware. Right, so coming back to our nice uh, little program that we, we're locking up here. Um, so we 
map the sector map uh, sector buffer uh, we regardless of what the configure setting is in the mega 65 um, we tell it that we're using the real drive so you can actually do this in your own code right if you've got code that you want to actually use the real floppy drive rather than the um, uh, a, a disk image you can actually set this bit zero in d6a1 um, and that tells it uh, that you want to use the real floppy drive so that's what we do in the, the test program as well for trends right so now we're talking to a real floppy drive but we actually need to um, seek to track zero select uh, the specified side so let me find right here's some code that seeks to track zero so basically we step into track uh, in a track until we get the track zero marker from the controller uh, and then side yeah and the, <laughs> the side flag on the 1580 on the c65 floppy controller is inverted um, so we can do that that way so now we'll be on track zero so let's find some code we've got seek random track okay or oh, read track number so this is looking good this will have the code in it right um until the busy flag clears blah blah blah, blah. seek to track zero so we did that and then we want to seek to the track number oops um, now this is a bit primitive here because it's waiting exactly six milliseconds and I know I fixed that elsewhere you can see that this floppy test code I mean it's just been crocked together for doing things um, so now I'll put the, the busy flag check in which does the right thing um, yep and heard we totally welcome for the explanation uh, seek to the desired track okay now we, we want to wipe the sector so we only want to do it to one track so we can ignore all the track seeky carry on um, so if we want to um, wipe the disk oh, sorry wipe the um, the track the way that we do that is we tell the floppy controller we want to write all zeros remember zeros as far as the floppy drive controller is concerned um, we're talking about mfm zeros not data bit zeros um, are flux inversions so the head will flip north south polarity doesn't matter which way around it was it just, it's the flipping that you can read so we tell it don't flip for data or for clock bits and a data bit and a clock bit together make an mfm bit um, so we don't flip uh, and we then want to do an unbuffered write so this is as though we were formatting the disk and now what we want to do is to let that just we, we keep feeding it these zero bytes uh, until we get to the end and so the reason that we so we're writing 6000 of them so this is based on a dd disk because this track wiping code was made for dd so we're going to get a little bit uh, overboard and we're going to make it like 30000 because we're purposely going to try and fit more on the the disk right um actually what's that printing out you know we don't really care about we don't want to print anything we just want to so this is checking whether we've hit the index mark because um, once we've hit the index mark then we know that we can actually stop uh, i think is that oh no sorry so this is the waiting for the drive the floppy controller to say i need the next byte to write because it's formatting works unbuffered you have to feed the bytes just in time as the disk is spinning um, it's like a, a raster uh, routine where you you know you're chasing the raster beam except now we're chasing the floppy head um, so it's much the same kind of thing um, 
write absolutely nothing on the whole track. And so the reason I want to do that is I just want to make sure again, we've got this issue with the, the, the magnetic flux moving based on what's already on the disk, including what's already been written to the disk. Um, because that'll change what flux is ahead on the track and behind on the track you've got what you've already written. And so both of those are going to exert a, um, a magnetic force on the bit as we write it in the middle there somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun. Uh, okay, so uh, Kedra Dragon says, I once told that formatting a PC pre-formatted HD disk as DD for Amiga will wear out the floppy quicker because the floppy is no longer written on the pre-made tricks. Do you know if that's actually true? Oh, now, so there are some minor differences uh, in the magnetic media and the right head strength between DD and HD. They're pretty darn close. So um, if you do what I'm doing here and you erase the track first and you did that over the whole disc um, and then you formatted it uh, for Amiga use, it would, I can't see there being any problem. Um, I think in reality, there's very unlikely to be uh, problems. Um, and indeed, you I mean you can use HD media in a DD drive and you can even get away for short periods of time using DD media in a HD drive, at least on the lower numbered tracks where the disc spins faster and has more, you know, um, uh, if it has a higher uh, resolution because there's more, the tracks are longer and going around in the same time. Uh, so, yeah, but I mean... I used HD discs in DD drives, in PC 720K drives, and I don't recall having ever had any problem in that direction. It was only using DD discs as HD discs that you would then uh, get problems. And you actually, you know, I remember noticing that the first few tracks would be fine, uh, and then it would just go downhill uh, progressively as you got further along the disc. So hopefully that answers the question to the best of my ignorance. Um, cool. Okay, so we've got... Uh, you're welcome there, um, Kija Dragon. Um, so then finally we want to write uh, the, so yeah, write the track at the desired rate. So what I'll do as well, I'm actually going to, um, where's bit, oh, format, Let me find the bits here where I'm, oh, here we are. So it's D6A2, lets us write the bit rate. So before we erase the track, um, erase the track at standard HD data rate, poke um, D6A2, comma, 08, OX, well, let's call it 40, right? Um, hey, Maurice. Um, so you can also get an idea of how easy it is just to, to hack around with the, the Mega 65 floppy controller, right? We can change the data rate with a single poke, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so now let's format it at the, the track at the specified uh, interval. So Maurice, we're just um, up to making a, a bit of a routine that will let us um, on a specific track at a specific data rate we erase the track and then we're going to format the track uh, and then we'll do some read testing to see uh, how reliable that works um, so read all or read a sector wow that's the perfect routine that we want um, so this is going to assume hey Thanks uh, for that, Maurice. Um, I think it's actually, it's really kind of fun to see how much we can cram on a, a floppy disk. Um, so we can then try to read those sectors back. So this routine, because we've got disabled all of this goop here for the seeking, and I'm just gonna start pruning code out so that we don't run out of memory. Because of course I'm adding some stuff in. Um, we can say read a sector track num 
side and we can do that for each sector for i is equal to now the 1581 formatting starts at sector one uh, sector count so we can try reading all of those sectors okay uh, and let's just make the border color change with that okay so let's get back to having all of that here okay so our main program sets up mega 65 mode sets the graphics mode print something to the screen uh, and then uh, turns a floppy motor on, selects a floppy drive, does all of that, seeks to track zero, um, selects the specified side, erases the track, formats the track, tries to read the sectors. Ah, okay, and so Marisa, meanwhile you're processing BitShifter's comments on the ROM uh, and he's processing yours, keeps you nice and busy. Yep, excellent. Yeah, and it's kind of fun to kind of uh, work with a, uh, a stream in the background sometimes I find I quite often will code away while I'm listening to um, uh, to Shallon on a, a Saturday night for you folks or Sunday morning for me uh, when I get up bright and early so let's see if this works. Oh, undefined track number ah, because it's track num yep this is copy past it right uh, so let's have a look and see if that okay so the border has done something so we'll assume that it's kind of done something um, so it, it didn't crash this is a start um, and actually because we're in standard text mode we can print a dot instead and we should Why do we only get one dot then? Is it? I need to have a look at that reader sector routine and see how it reports errors back, um, whether that crashed or not. Or maybe the palette is set up funny. So it's reading one sector. Um, so let's actually do print F um, reading back percent D sectors so we'll get rid of the new line so we can see what we're doing um, print F writing track Uh, and then we'll tell it printf pre-erasing track uh, and then we'll say here seeking to track blah and we'll say writing track at rate percent D mm -hmm. okay so it claims to have read 10 tracks back um, I'm dubious because of this probably what it is so i've got i defined as a global variable i wouldn't mind betting that reader sector is doing something with i um, so i'm going to uh, need to have a separate variable uh, 
unsigned char sector num. Uh, we don't need to pre-declare it. Right, now we're getting 10 sectors apparently being read. So what I need to do is to check whether those sectors have been correctly read or whether we have an error because we're currently not checking that at all. Yeah, Maurice um, says he misses that drive sound. It is it's just it's just something really nice and atmospheric about having the floppy drive chug and grind, even when using the SD card thing. It's one of the things that we're really glad actually that we implemented, um, even though it makes the loading from SD card slower because it, you actually incur real um, track step times. Um, but yeah, it, it just makes it really atmospheric, which is really lovely. Okay, so let's have a look at our read a sector routine. Oh, it does return a... Okay, so zero if success, um, one if failure. So if uh, errors plus plus, um, else. So we will we'll print a big fat X if we fail to read uh, a sector back. And we'll keep track of the errors. So um, if errors... Um, encountered percent d errors at this rate and I'll show you why that's important because one of the things that we actually want to do is to see how many sectors we can physically fit on at a given rate um, so if I tell it I want at the standard, so we were at the standard HD data rate, 10 sectors. In actual fact, we know we can get 20 on there. Uh, but if I tell it I want 50 sectors on the track, um, the disk will have rotated around uh, and it will have stopped writing. Because uh, three and a half inch floppy drives, or these ones at least, old ones didn't apparently, but these ones do. When they hit the index mark, they actually turn off the write gate. Uh, so they stop writing regardless. Um, so let's reload this. And now we're going to try 50 sectors. So the first 20. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So zero hasn't worked. Um, and that's because we actually number sectors from one. I need to double check that that's how I've got the loop set up. And now all of these additional sectors uh, are problematic. So I'll probably even remember what the first sector number is um, that's balked. Um, so let's go back to the editor. Uh, oh, no, interesting. So that was, so it was writing from sector one. So it's, hmm, we might actually have a, let me just try and run that again and see if it could just have been a, a freak that it's written that sector. Uh, badly. Nope, okay. Hmm, let me have a look at that read a sector thing and see whether it's subtracting one from the sector number or something silly like that. Nope, so it looks like. So why is that failing then? More the point, how many sectors are being read correctly? This is one of the things I like about having the, um, uh, being able to do the, the video blend with this is that I can um, uh, use the mouse cursor and see and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19. So yeah, we've only got uh, 19. Okay, so Keith Cannon is saying, could you print the sector number percent 10 rather than the dot? Uh, yes, that would probably make sense. And I think I even did that in some other utility somewhere. So yeah, you see the, a digit um, to give you a, a clue. So it's got me quite curious as to why the first one is being written 
wrongly where the because if we're starting the right on the wrong edge of the um, uh, the sync mark it could be that it's not right no because no, then the whole right would fail um, anyway let me I'll make that change um, and oh and, and heard we're saying um, he had an old deck station with SCSI to SD and it's not the same without the hard drive noises yeah I think you're right and um, uh, Kitchen Dragon said yeah the same on his Amiga he could recognize the games by the drive sounds absolutely and welcome along to the, the extra folks that have kind of uh, uh, lurked along as well there's 12 year on there which is great um, so let's come back and try and find out why that first sector is being written incorrectly um, because it's a bit bizarre okay, back down to the bottom okay um, so let's put the number here hi Dr. Holcomb <laughs> he says hello from this lurker welcome along uh, percent D uh, sector num per oops percent 10 so that should now show us the uh, uh, the sector numbers and what we might do as well um, I'm going to keep track of how many good in a row I should know I really want to know how many um, it's consecutive errors I actually need to know because what I'm going to do is once it hits like three consecutive errors I'm just going to stop uh, so that we don't waste stacks of time because I want to have it iterate through and try and work out uh, the maximum number that we can get uh, on uh, do I actually even need to do that no I'm over engineering things here um, as it is is fine um, we just need to find out why the first sector is being a problem um, I'm wondering Uh, if it is some synchronization thing with the spindle right then having a, a delay before we start formatting the track might well nope so we're still there with that let me and now that we've got the digits <laughs> now that the, the the capital X is a pain so I'll make that a lowercase x so that we can visually see what's going on and we'll put uh, actually I'm going to put it on a new line as well so that we can just have the sector count we'll have the whole line because we're actually potentially going to be able to get quite close to 40 sectors on a, uh, a track so actually let's just even before we get any further, let's change our bit interval. Hmm, that was interesting. The um, <laughs> my screen dropped out. I just heard the refrigerator kick in. I thought, oh, the power's gone out uh, because with the display dropped out. But it's um, hmm, it's caused an interesting EMF spike um, somewhere. So if we go for not forty as the interval, uh, but if we go for something like 30 and we're going to turn off the sector gaps well, here, I'll, first I'll show you what happens if we turn off the sector gaps so again we're trying to write 50 sectors instead of uh, 20 uh, on the disk as you'll have to check the disk formatting code because it tries to pre-prepare sectors and it might be that because we've told it 50 things are overflowing and bad things are happening so let's actually just I'm going to go back and tell it we just want to do everything just according to the book for a three and a half inch floppy disk HD format yes and now we read it all correctly right so what's probably caused that problem before we come here to format single track side is we pre-calc the sector header CRCs and we only allow for 20 sectors so 
So let's instead allow for like 64 sectors. I can't see us going above that. Um, and we're going to only have one, we're just going to write empty sectors here. Uh, whereas previously, this code would automatically work out if you're on track 39 and would try and write a correct directory uh, track. So pre-calc header CRC, so that's fine. And it's the data CRC that we need. So we're going to just have yeah, so this is the magic code, right? Where we're checking if we're on side uh, zero and track 39. So if we're not on track 39, uh, we're already B0. We're actually going to delete all of this code that generates different sectors each time. We just want standard boring empty data sector so that we don't have to have the separate memory buffers uh, for those. Okay, so let's try that again. I got an error. In, oh, yep, got an error in there. Oh, okay. Uh, sector dat. I've chopped off one too many letters there. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay, and then yep, elsewhere we've got. Yeah. So when we actually write in the sector, we also need to read purely from that. Right now we're. crickets why is that now so writing the track is failing so write a single track format single track side and then we say reading back okay Track side sector num. So we have sector count. Is that how we're setting it down here? What have I got wrong here? Yeah, Herdwest says too bad none of the uh, the prototype Commodore hard drives uh, are known at this time. They would have been interesting to look at. Indeed, I think there might have also been uh, interesting uh, horrors at the same time, but that's fine. Um, it certainly would have been interesting to look at. Um, so let me, what are we doing that, more the point, how can the formatting actually get stuck? Um, I'm going to get rid of our U sleep because that's not required to fix the problem. Because our problem, we believe, was uh, with the the bad first sector was because we were write, trying to write more than 20 and so it was overwriting stuff but now we've got format single track side getting stuck somewhere um so if we make sure that it generates each of the things uh, okay, right. So this is the this routine was actually designed to display stuff in a different video mode that I set up for some parts of this tool. So we will just change this to um, printf, and we'll see if it's generated that. And we'll try and get an idea of where it's hanging. Right, so my, I'm wondering if it's not happening in this loop at the beginning somewhere. So S is less than zero, uh, it goes through sector count. Let's 
print a dot every time. Okay, so it only happens there once and it's not getting out the loop, right? Um, so we're doing a B0. Let me just put a bit more debugging in here. We'll put a comma out there and maybe a colon there. So we'll see if which of those appear. And only the dot. Ah, <laughs> this will be the problem. Because now that sector data is not a um, an array of arrays, if we try and erase that element of it, it will write 512 zeros beginning at whatever is in that by default, which is probably a zero, it's going to be stomping all over our memory. Um, so I'm pretty confident that that's magically going to fix that problem now. Bugs are fun. Ah, yeah, good morning. Oh, nach der Schweiz. Um, yeah, Heinz uh, uh, 76 says hello. Uh, good morning from Switzerland. Which I guess it's now just morning in Switzerland, right? Uh, as of seven minutes ago. So we're all in the morning uh, if we're in Central European time or um, uh, in Australia. Right, so now that we've fixed that, indeed, we're getting the 20 sectors read back. So this is great. Ah, okay, sorry, Herdway, so you're talking about the prototype three and a half inch HD floppy drives, the 1591 or the 1590. Yes, that would have been, um, that would have been quite nice uh, to see as well. Okay, uh, Dr. Vulcan, will Omega 65 support um, both GCR and MFM for, um, floppy formats in 65 mode. So what's interesting, so when you say GCR, um, if you mean to be able to plug in a five and a quarter inch floppy drive to the 34 pin connector, like a standard PC floppy drive, and read 1541 disks, yes, eventually we intend for that to work. Um, but for the three and a half inch disk, there is no point using GCR, and this is one of the discoveries as I've been going through the whole process, MFM fits just as much data um, you know, per like its effective data rate is identical uh, between GSR, uh, GCR and MFM. To get above MFM, you actually have to go to um, uh, to RLL or what we're doing at the moment, which is actually varying the number of sectors per track by varying the data rate, like the fifteen forty one did. So, but effectively, we're, we're using the clever trick of the fifteen forty one on a three and a half inch floppy drive at the moment. Uh, that should get us about two megabytes on a floppy uh, to provide the, that little bit of background for those who have also tuned in uh, in the last few moments. Right, so let's... I'm uh, just going to remove some of that debug output that we don't need just so it makes it easier for us to read what's going on. And so now if we come down to main and here's our... There's a nice thing here. So we're saying at the standard uh, floppy rate, a data rate for an HD drive, um, instead of writing 20 sectors, which we know works, um, let's try and write 50. And it should now not bark, but it will only, of course, result in um, 20 or maybe 21 um, valid sectors. So we've got exactly 20 in fact um, which doesn't surprise me and then the rest of them are being you know having uh, read errors oh, I could even make the errors X's red if I felt like it but I can't quite be bothered right now so now if we turn off the gap so now this is doing it Amiga style so it would require track at once writing but that should get us about 10% more capacity on the disk so we should get an extra two sectors maybe even a third one um, depending on kind of what fractions of things. And you saw it actually, it took more rotations um, to read because now uh, the disk, the sectors are coming by a little bit quicker uh, and we actually have to use, uh, you know, occasionally we need to use interleave if we wanted to not have a gap. 
but we're still only reading 20 back, um, which is a bit interesting. So uh, let me find out what I've balked in there. Um, so we're telling it sector count, format single track side, right? Format single track side. So we initialize the sectors with sector count. And then we count the sector count by twos. Um, okay, this is a bit interesting. So I'm just going to I've just be very fast with any debug that we do here. Um, because we're, we're racing the, um, the floppy head. Um, so I'm going to put exclamation marks up for every sector that it thinks it's writing. Uh, across the top line of the screen. So hopefully we will see whether it's, yeah, so it thinks it's written 50. It thinks it's written 50. Um, but it's only reading back 20, even though, as I say, we, we've turned off the gaps. Um, so we should be getting 22 uh, on a track. So, let me just with gaps right so this is you know we we write gaps if we have the gaps with gaps yeah and we're passing that in um so we'll put a dollar sign in if we've written this gap so if for some reason the, the with gaps variable is being messed up in there we should see. Which it doesn't think it is. And yet we're only getting 20 sectors written. That's really weird. So there's something strange going on. So I'm sure I've actually, I previously have done a test where uh, I've been able to write more than 20. And the fact that, uh, as we see when it runs, you get that kind of jerky is having to do multiple rounds to read all of the sectors because it's um, it's faster than we can do the, the print to screen in between because you, you read the end of a sector then you've got a short gap before the next sector begins um, and that's the time that we have to update our display and everything and so that takes a little bit too long uh, then we have to wait one whole revolution to get around uh, and so um, if we come back down to here again and so with if I turn the gaps back on You see when it reads it now, it basically reads it in one revolution uh, because there's actually just enough time with those gaps or it might be a couple of revolutions. But if I turn the gaps back off, you'll see that it's kind of, it's jerkier. It takes more revolutions to read the data. So you can see that it takes additional revolution. So that's because the, the sectors are being packed closer together. Um, now, why on earth then the extra sectors aren't on there um, is to me a little bit of a mystery because by my reckoning, the gaps save enough space on the disk to fit an extra sector. Uh, indeed, this is how the Amiga does it. Um, unless this is related to the reason that the FD2000 used 1K sectors to save a little bit more space because it didn't quite fit. Um, so what we'll do next is um, I'm going to drop the data rate from 40 to 30. So now we should fit lots more sectors on the track. And it will be interesting to see how many Oh, look, here they come. And now we're really having to do a revolution every time. And yet we're only getting 20. That makes me think that maybe I'm generating the header CRCs in some broken way. But that's actually nice, right? So we, we've set the data rate to 150% of the, um, the standard data rate for uh, a 1.44 meg floppy drive. 
and we're still able to read them back. The 20th one is not there, which is it's a little bit weird. Um, so let me just go format single track side. Oops. So we generate the header CRC. So this is the, oh, that's, sorry, that's the data CRCs. Ah, here's why we can't ever get more than 20, um, because we're only generating 20 headers. Right, so we'll generate all of those. Um, we're somewhat uselessly generating separate data CRCs for every sector, but who cares? Um, Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, because there's only 19 sectors instead of 20 on that last occasion, which is a bit annoying. Ah, look, more sectors. My precious sectors. Um, so now we're getting 31 sectors. And this is, yes, um, here we're at CC65 uh, that I'm using. So just because it's, it's easy. Um, and it, it compiles pretty quickly. KickC produces tighter code, um, but that comes at a cost. A bit like XMIs, it takes forever to pack things. Okay, so let's go back now and turn off gaps. Now that we've got our problem. Oh, that was actually with gaps turned off already, right? Cool. So if we put gaps on, we should get less than the 31. Yeah, so we get less than, okay, we, we had one read error er earlier on. Um, and again, because we may need to do right pre-compensation at these speeds. So I'm not worried about the odd error, so long as overall uh, they're reading fine. So let's, come back. Um, so we'll go back to the normal data rate and try and do the Amiga style, right? So we should be able to get um, hopefully 22 sectors on a track or at least 21 with gaps, sorry, without gaps rather, but at the normal HD floppy speed. Interesting. So we're getting 24 sectors per track at the standard rate. Hmm. So that's 12 kilobytes per track side um, times 80. What's that work out to, right? So if we've got, so a standard PC floppy disk gets 18 sectors per side, two sides, 80 tracks times 5112 bytes gets us that many bytes. Uh, and if we divide all of that by 1024, uh, this is one of the other fascinating things that I found out as well about uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the half-truths of the storage uh, marketing. Uh, they've been going on for, for decades. So we talk about a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. What we mean is 1,440 lots of 1,024 bytes. So it's not like 1.44 megabytes should either be, um, you know, 1.44 times a million. That would be a rational number, right? Or 1.44 times 1024 times 1024. That would also make sense if we're saying 1.44 meg. But 1,440 lots of a, a binary kilobyte, this is cuckoo because um, what they could have done instead um, if they wanted to maximize their lie they could have called it a 1.47 megabyte disk maybe the marketing people decided 1.44 just sounded better um, but anyway so that's what a pc is getting the um fd2000 actually uses 10 sectors of 1k but it all works out the same so that gets us our 1.6 meg um, an Amiga gets 1.76, and we've just shown 
that with my drive at least, we can get 1.92 meg without, uh, this is at the standard data rate, right? Um, we, we haven't changed the data rate. We're still at the standard data rate. So if this worked on um, track 79, which is the hardest one to write with, we can already fit just under two megabytes on a disk. Let's see. Ah, my precious. <laughs> we can get more than I was expecting. Um, so that means that we can fit 24 sectors on the shortest tracks on the disk. Now, um, let's go. Um, so I wrote a program that tries to estimate based on what we know about the disks, how many sectors per track we can get and therefore the, uh, the total size. Um, it also does some other crazy stuff down here, which we will ignore for the time being. Uh, this was when I was trying to think about uh, making custom RLL codes and then, of course, discovered that the people who made the RLL 2.7 code have made a much better code than I would be able to make. Um, so if we go here and... Is it, where did I put the... Oh yeah, we'll ignore that error. Okay, blah, blah, blah. right. So what this is trying to do for us, and I'll bigify the font, is saying track zero, instead of 20 sectors per track, we should be able to get 32 with gaps. And without gaps, we should be able to get 36 instead of 22 based on the extra distance of the thing and then choosing the um, uh, the appropriate bit rates uh, for that. So, um, and that's using the known geometry of the floppy. So we know the inner track length is 0.9719 inches and the outside is 1.5551 inches. Um, and then we can do all the calculations relative to the track zero length, which is the track zero is the outer track, by the way. Um, so, hey, um, DJ DFed, um, welcome along as well, as we do terrible, terrible things to floppy disks. Um, so, we are working out how many sectors we fit based on the nominal capacity of the disk divided by the number of bytes it takes to have a... Um, uh, a sector with a gap or a sector without a gap. Now, just hang on, my son is just here and wants to ask me something. Okay, big again. So we now know that this 5960 being based on being able to fit uh, 10 sectors uh, is wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Herdware says, referring to my son, next generation 6502 coder. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, currently he likes to uh, do command stuff in Minecraft uh, and a bit of Python uh, and Scratch. So everything is headed in the right direction. Um, so we know the reality actually must be a little bit more than 5960 because we managed to fit 24, 24 sectors uh, on with gaps. So we know it actually has to be 525 times 24. Five two five times twenty four. 
um, which let's actually just work that out again. Of course, nothing like having an 8-bit computer to use as a calculator. 525 times 24. Uh, what if I... Oh, because... Mm, okay. So, because it's talking about DD bytes. So, instead of 5900, we know it's at least 6300. Now, if we multiply that by... Um, are you getting long buffering? You, you may, and I'm not sure whether... So it's currently saying my internet side is okay, but again, I'm coming from Australia, right? Um, so the comments and things take, well, the comments come quickly, um, but what you'll find is that by the time you hear a response from me, it will be quite a while. Um, so if, uh, to give an idea of how long that round trip is, if someone can please say the word, um, uh, potato and as soon as I see potato I'll reply with the word banana and you'll see what the um, uh, the round trip time is right so I've just seen it uh, come through now um, so hopefully you will have seen um, and hello seriously uh, MS was a, another uh, erstwhile lurker on the channel welcome along um, hopefully you will have seen that the my text response has come up a long time before I've actually said that I've typed banana or even that you might have heard the keyboard uh, with me hitting it. So the, the text piece tends to have low latency, but I think it's the CDN magic to get the stream from Australia back to the, uh, the European CDN distribution and in the US as well um, is, shall we say, a touch tardy. Um, and I actually get the, the opposite. Uh, way around so when I'm watching other people's streams like Shallon's stream for example um, you know there's quite a long delay uh, from when he uh, says stuff so yeah that's right um, DJ DFID no worries um, yeah feel free enjoying watching later on uh, when you catch up okay so um, back to things so we know we can get uh, not five nine Uh, 60 so it was so this is what we had here right we know it in reality on this drive at least is at least 6300 so PGS on my Alps drive in the mega 65 R3 we get at least 6300 because we can fit 24 HD sectors at rate 40 without gaps on a track. 12 times 525 equals 6300. Cool. Uh, Dr. Vulcan, does the brand of the floppy media have any bearing on pushing the capacity to its limits? Yes, it will. So the maximum data rate that we can get away with on the high numbered tracks will be somewhat dependent on the quality of the media um, and also the drive. So this is one of the, the cool things actually that I, I really like with the Mega 65 is that we've managed to get 1400 plus identical, as I understand it, Alps three and a half inch drives. So we've actually got identical hardware like we had back in the 8-bit day. So we can actually optimize for things that will work on the Alps drives that may not work on some other brands of drives. Uh, so uh, probably we can do 84 track disks for the same reason, because these Alps drives will go to track 84. Uh, some other drives will only go to track 81 or 82. Um, piece of floppy trivia that I also learned. Um, lots of media when you buy it on track 81 side zero, there's actually uh, an ID sector that tells you the batch number and uh, manufacturer and all sorts of other cool information about the, um, uh, the floppies. So, um, yeah, that can be quite fun to, uh, uh, to, to look at. But anyway, so um, back to uh, my funky program here. So this is what we have based on the, um, uh, the previous with the, the 5960 bytes per track. 
So if we get down to track uh, 79, uh, without, sorry, with gaps, exactly two megabytes. Um, so not of those weird 1.44 meg megabytes, but actual real megabytes, 2048 uh, kilobytes. And uh, without gaps, so Amiga style, we can actually push it up to 2.3 meg uh, thereabouts. But now that we know we can fit a bit more on, we can run it again with those increased numbers. And we can see now we're getting uh, the odd extra uh, sector per track. And if we come down to there, so now we can get you know two point it's an extra hundred kilobytes on the disk potentially. So what we need to do is to automate our little program to see just how much we can fit uh, on the tracks at the different rates because we, we are kind of still making a bit of estimate here about things. And the other danger is that this is based on whatever speed my drive is spinning at which is allowed to be one percent out um, so it may be that we need to take away one percent from this hard upper value uh, whereas the 5960 value is based on standard formats uh, so uh, there's going to be a bit of optimizing and stuff um, so with gaps um, let me check what we were getting with gaps because I thought oddly we we're only getting 20 uh, with gaps, but let me come back and have a look. Uh, and I should, should check <laughs> what setting this is in. Right, so that was with, well, let me have a look. Uh, oh, now I'm on the wrong thing, right, okay. So that was without, gaps right so if I do with gaps this is track 79 normal floppy speed so normal HD speed yeah so we've got 21 um, with gaps so that's kind of nice as well so that would mean with a sector at once writing scheme um, we can still beat the Amiga because uh, the Amiga, well, sorry, no, we, we almost match the Amiga. Sorry, it's one sector less than the Amiga. So this would get us, um, uh, if it was DD, it would be 840 kilobytes. So it would be 1680 kilobytes uh, on a disk. So let's now see what data rate we can, like, let's turn all the knobs up on this worst possible track, right? So we're on track 79, which is the one that sucks. Um, because it's the shortest track gaps off let's try rating uh, writing at a data rate of 30 so this is actually increasing the uh, the data rate by four thirds so it should get us 1.33 times 24 because we've turned the, the gaps off so we know we can do that um, but we're now going to be really pushing the data rate uh, above what the media is supposed to support and this is just with some random crusty old floppy that I've got um, so it's possible <laughs> that it's not going to read anything because we really are pushing uh, you know, the limits of what it can try and do. And indeed, it looks like we have. So let's wind the knobs back a bit. Uh, and let's go for a data rate of 35. So now we're, you know, it's only close to sort of 10% difference. Oh, I love to see those extra sectors. So we've got 28 sectors uh, on uh, at a data rate of 35 on track 79 uh, with gaps turned off, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's find. And I think what we're going to find, the reason we've got absolutely nothing reading, I reckon this is where we're starting to hit the analog stuff in the um, the drive, where it goes, no, you don't really want to read pulses or write pulses that close together, and it will be suppressing them in its filter. I could be wrong, but I think that might be what's happening. Right, so now we're starting to get some more errors uh, in return for one extra sector. Let's go 33.
yeah, we're seeing it starting to break down quite badly. Um, I'm actually going to try something really radical. I'm going to go to double the rate of what a, um, a HD disk is supposed to do. The reason I'm going for double, if it's an analog thing and it's a filter, that we may well fit in a notch in the filter uh, reading back at that double rate. Um, we're not, <laughs> so probably we were hitting the um, uh, the upper limits of what the media uh, can tolerate. Uh, so that's quite interesting. So we, I think 35 was about the limit of what we were getting from the, um, no, without sector errors, right? We just double check that. So we've got one error there. So let's try um, 36. So that will be a 10%. So but again, this is absolutely pushing the limits of um, what we can then squish on a disk, right? Because we're actually increasing the data rate on the shortest track from what it currently gets written to. Um, so this is a, an extra bonus uh, on top. So we can get 26 sectors per track on the um, uh, the shortest track. So we're getting an extra, um, we're fitting 10% more on basically, right? Um, which gets us two extra. And of course, where that gets interesting is if we move down now to, sec uh, to track zero, so if I come down to track zero, um, so we can say uh, 36, plus no gaps works on track 79 without errors um, equals 26 sectors per track. Right. Um, on track zero, we should be able to drop the data rate quite a bit more. We'll do an initial run just with track zero just so that we kind of we can baseline uh, this I need to be able to see what I'm typing there so this should absolutely work as well without errors yep cool okay so let's go at a data rate of 30. Now remember that these aren't linear steps, uh, that these are divisors. So when we divide by 30 instead of dividing by 40, uh, we're increasing it quite a bit more. So at 30, we are getting 31 sectors per track. <laughs> remember, a standard PC does 18 per track. So let's try 25. Let's find the point where it breaks down. And that would be below it. <laughs> but again, remember that I mean, 25 instead of 40 uh, is a, a massive step up in capacity because of this nonlinearity. Um, let's try 28. I reckon this might be kind of near where the limit is. Okay, so we're still a bit low. Maybe 30 was all we can do. 29. Mm. And again, we, we still may be hitting that the analog stuff in the, um, uh, the drive is filtering thing, the, you know, the pulses out when they happen too quickly. So I reckon 30 is the limit for us, right? And I forget how many sectors we got. It's amazing actually how sharp that edge is. It's quite interesting. 
Right, so we can get 31 sectors per track. Um, on there, which what I'm going to do, so we're also getting an idea of how many sectors we should be able to fit at a given data rate. Um, so let's actually have ourselves a nice little array, unsigned char, um, sectors by rate. And so we know we're going for rates of up to 40. So we want to, the array needs to go from zero to 40. Um, so we also know that anything below 30 just isn't working, right? So we're going to say So 0, 9, 19, 29, 39, 49. Um, actually, so we only need to go to here. Right, so 0, 10, 20, 30. So 30 got us 31 sectors. And 36, so 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 gets us uh, how many did we say it was? Oh, there wasn't a 26. Okay, so let's go back to our standard 40. I think this was 24, I reckon, wasn't it? Yep, 24. And this is, yeah, so how many sectors per track? without gaps, i.e. Amiga style, uh, 24. So you can see that as the, you know, like the data rate, because it's a divisor, uh, it climbs very slowly at first and then uh, goes much more quickly. So let's we know 36 it gets us there. Let's try 37 and see how many that gets us. Uh, and oops, hang on, I need to actually run it. Because what we want to do is kind of fill in this table to work out uh, how many sectors we can get at the different data rates. <laughs> and and Herdway says, witchcraft. Uh, yeah, it probably is. Okay, so 37 also gets us. 26 and the reason it's good to know these the interaction of these devices is of course we want to use the largest divisor that still gets us the same number of sectors because that will be more forgiving uh, with timing on everything so let's go for 38 as our interval and see what that does for us Right, so that's the threshold to 25 sectors. And now let's go 39. So the other thing that's worth mentioning is that we already actually use it very slightly faster than the official data rate because the Mega 65 is clocked at 40.5 megahertz, not 40. Um, so 40.5 divided by 40 is a teeny little bit over uh, one megabit, or one megahertz rather, I should say. Yeah, so that gets us 24 as well. Right, so now what we want to have a look at is how many do we get at 31? And look, we could automate this, but there's so few things to actually test. Um, what I probably will do though is I'll automate um, it uh, trying the different data rates on different tracks to see which ones work on which tracks. Right, so <laughs> 31 is getting us 30 sectors per track. Thirty-two. Let's see what that gets us. So 
keeps the suspense right. Okay, that gets us 29. And so you can see now that it's, you know, that they, it, it really does fall away more quickly than at the, um, the lower rates. Okay, so let's go 33. Okay, so that also gets us 29. Gets us 28. And so 35 then, we're guessing will probably get us 27, just because it seems improbable that it will skip one in that range, but you never know because it's quantized based on whole sector sizes and all manner of other interesting things. Yep, 27. Right, so really what we want to say is unsigned char um, rate for sector count. We know we can only get to 31 sectors, which is fine. Whoops. And we, there's no point going below the standard data rate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So up to 20 sectors per track, we know we're good with 40. In fact, we actually know that um, we can get all the way up to 24 sectors per track at the standard rate. If we want 25 sectors, then we have to use 38. If we want 26 sectors, we're going to use the slowest of the, um, the speeds, so the highest number, so 37. Then it will be 35, 36, gets us to not 35. Right, so 38 gets us 25. 25, 26, 27. So 28 is 31, 2, 3, 4. Yep. And then 29 will be one less than that. 30 will be 31. And 31 will be 30. So now we have a nice table for the data rates that we need, um, no gaps. Right. So we can, for each track, so if we say for track num equals zero, track num less than 80, track num plus plus our track number we want to try getting as many sectors as we can up to 31 so uh, 
we had a sector count somewhere, didn't we? Where are we? Oh, there's sector count in there. Is there? Yep. Okay. So we're actually going to say for sector count is equal to 31 sector count is greater than or equal to 24 sector count minus minus. Well, actually, we'll, we'll do it in the positive sense, right? 24 because it'll just make our checking easier. Count is less than or equal to 31 sector count plus plus. We'll do this each time then. And what we want to do is as soon as we get an error, we're actually going to stop trying to fit that many on the track. So we do our reading back. I'm actually going to cut out a whole pile of this debug output. We'll leave the seeking to track because it's kind of the, the one thing that's of interest to us. Uh, in fact, actually, we'll say track blah, and we'll have it print out um, where are we? So we know it's so it's going to go through each of the number of possible sectors it can fit per track, and it's going to print out the number of errors that occur with that I think that needs to go there. So theory has it, this will go through and tell us. Ah, because I've still got that printing out, right? Okay, I need to fix that. So I wanted to just print out how many errors it has at each thing. So we need not display that oh, no. okay, I'm printing the track number in the wrong spot because yeah we want to do it once per track number. And so what we want to see is as many zeros as possible because that hmm so why is it <laughs> fascinating um, I have to find out why it's still getting one error on there sometimes. because uh, I'm not actually setting the data rate right yet for each time I'm setting how many sectors I want to read but not the actual data rate so we need to where am I setting d6a2 uh, to our bit interval right okay so we need to set bit interval is equal to rate for sector count no gaps uh, sector count and I'm going to move the seeking the track to outside the loop because 
it should be okay now let's try that Right, so we should get zero errors until the track ceases to be able to fit the right amount of data on there. So track zero should actually pass all the way through. Should. Now why is the border changing and nothing else happening? What have I bought up? the reader sector failing because this code's not called anymore so we're going to cut that out because we don't need it Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make it so for each thing it will actually show how many it's read out of the, um, uh, the desired number. So now it's having uh, trouble. So I'm just going to double check uh, while hmm, it's got 15 of the okay, so that's hitting the um, the data rate limit for that track, presumably. It's a bit weird because we had that working before, didn't we? We had 31 reading. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What is going on there? Well, in the first instance, we can actually just try for only up to 28, just so we can see it run through on a few more tracks. Then I'm going to have to turn it in because the, uh, the family are woken up now. So something a bit fishy going on there because that's failing now and it shouldn't have. Hmm. Maybe I will put the track seeking back in just because I think it is probably helping to make sure that we're in a known sensible state. Okay, that's looking a little bit nicer. Cool, so yeah, we can fit 31 sectors on track zero. And now you can probably hear it's doing the, the seeky seeky in between. And whether that's that problem or whether it's actually now having, it's, got, it's interesting that it got that because I suspect we'll find that um, it will reliably get more than that and there'll be some bug in my setup here. 
or maybe not maybe track zero is the only one that we can reliably write uh, 31 which is okay so what I'm going to do I'm just going to tweak it again to simply print out the number of sectors uh, that were maximally written with a hundred percent of them being read back correctly so if we come down here and comment that out uh, if not errors print f percent d sector count and if we if we've got a track number up here I'm just going to condense all of this so that it can all fit on one screen of output so I'm going to leave this running while I go off and do some other things this morning and then hopefully when I come back I'll get to see exactly how many sectors per track it was able to um, uh, to cram right, so it's saying track zero these are all the ones that have had 100% success so hopefully that will go to 31 and it's still not all going to fit on the screen is it Oliver a, a, a poke and a fiddle but uh, unfortunately that's where I'm gonna have to stop for now and we'll come back to this adventure of how much data can we cram on a floppy um, another day okay take care guys thanks for watching catch you around